How often do you use Google when writing code? Maybe looking up syntax on Stack Overflow or just asking how to do something from ChatGPT. I don't know, maybe you're a genius, maybe you've got everything memorized in all the languages that you use, but I'll admit, I ask for help, I use Google, Stack Overflow, ChatGPT, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Maybe you do it too. For most people, there's no way to remember all that stuff. So I like to compile notes, a little bit of cheat sheets, hey, snippets of code that I could use and search for across like an obsidian vault. But I'll admit that takes a lot of time to build out and create, especially curating all of that for a specific topic or niche. But let me show you something new from Maldev Academy that I think is just super cool. Maldev Academy has built out exactly this, a utility to search through code specifically for finding syntax and snippets that you can just copy and paste to help develop malware. Gentle reminder as I realize I'm saying this out loud, hey, educational purposes only, don't be a cyber criminal, blah, 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 you know the disclaimer. This is online and available at search.maldevacademy.com and a link in the video description, but look at how cool this is. It's searching through all of the material included in Maldev Academy, over 400 code snippets, 150 and more techniques, and a bunch of external files that you could pull in. All you need to do is just like use Google, type in what you want, and then see if you could grab some syntax and code to do that for you. And I gotta say, this makes it so easy, it is literally just copy and paste. You get to use like Legos, building blocks for whatever you wanna put together. And maybe a lot of you are familiar with the scenario where you would repeat code or reuse snippets from different projects that you've already started, and now you need to put them into a new project. This just streamlines all of that. Maldiv Academy Code Search gives you all of the puzzle pieces. You just need to know, hey, what components do you want to put together in your code? And then you literally just, hey, put it all together. But hey, before we dive in, I gotta say, look, I try my best with videos like these to keep consistently getting free cybersecurity education out for you without costing you a dime. And the only way to do that really is with sponsorship. And honestly, I just love to showcase stuff that I think is genuinely really cool. So please let me tell you about Maldev Academy. Brought to you by the renowned security researchers Mr. Docs and Null, join a comprehensive and module-based malware development course that provides fundamental to advanced level training. Write your own implants, beacons, and malware with modern 64-bit architecture, perfect for offensive security specialists or even beginners with no prior experience in malware development. With over 100 text-based modules, all with downloadable files and code, and a vibrant Discord community, you learn so much. Between process injection, compile time API hashing, anti-debugging techniques, sandbox detection, and so, so much more. You're provided a virtual machine that includes all the pre-built tools and code ready for you. And of course, upon completion, you get that fancy certificate that proves all the awesome stuff that you've learned. With Maldev Academy, you can choose any plan for access to the material, or jump into lifetime access and get all the new updates. Both Mr. Docs and Null are always sharing new research, between lolbins or other tradecraft, and with Maldev Academy, you can truly become a professional malware developer. Dive into the Academy with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash maldevacademy. For a limited time, you can use my code HAMMON10 for 10% off. Huge thanks to Maldev Academy for sponsoring this video. All right, time for the demo. So I am inside of my Windows 11 virtual machine and I'm gonna fire up Visual Studio so we can create a new project. And I'll use the code search from Maldev Academy to be able to rapidly build out a payload builder, something to stage, hey, some shell code that we might encrypt, and then a loader to just fire it off. And we'll see how fast we crank that out. Let me create a new project. I'll go ahead and just use an empty C++ project, that's fine. We'll go ahead and call this like sandbox or whatever we want. I'll hit enter to get that started and that will create that project for us. Over here in the source files, I'll just add a new item for a main.c and then we can go ahead and start some simple code. Let me go ahead and include our Windows header file that we'll typically use for these. Let's create just a classic vanilla main function with an integer argument for our count of arguments and then the character array with our arguments themselves. And we can just simply test if the arg count is not equal to two, in which case we'll just do a puts, uh, please provide an argument. And then let's return 
negative one as an error, right? Let me switch this to just to uh, release mode for the sake of testing this, making sure it works. And let's go ahead and build this. Looks like that succeeded, excellent. So let me go open my command prompt and see if I can fire this off. Just for the sake of a simple sanity check, let's go ahead and invoke this. It does need an argument. So if I were to run this one more time with a little please sub, that does not have any output. So looking good, that code functions as needed. And now let's use the code search from out of Academy. And let's think through those components, right? The small snippets of code that we need to use as building blocks to accomplish the larger task just broken down into smaller chunks. Say we want to encrypt shell code, so we'll probably need to supply shell code that's provided on disk, and we'll need to read in that payload. So let me get back to the web browser where I am able to search and I could just try to read payload. Does that give me any options? I saw one that popped up, read file from disk, and looks like there are a couple different options here, ASCII, Unicode, write file to disk, oh, and some registry stuff. I think this is all that we need. It calls this read file from disk A with the appropriate arguments to read an ASCII file. Um, we will need a p byte variable to receive the base address of the file and the file size. I'll end up receiving that file size. Okay, let's just go ahead and copy paste this code. Super easy, right? Now, all I need to do is slap this in here. And with that, we'll have that function already built out for us. So let's go validate that. We know that we need a ulong pointer for our u file buffer, and that can be set as null to start. We also have a d word for our dw file size. These are all the out parameters that will be returned by our function, so we'll just stage these to be null to start. And actually, we can move these down underneath our argument check, because that will be, hey, the continuation of the code. And then we'll check if we can read file from disk A, and we'll pass in our first argument that's provided, indexing that out, and then our file buffer, given the ampersand address, same thing with our DW size ampersand, paste that in. And that should actually probably have a not in front of it, because if that were to fail, then we want to return negative one, and we'll add a semicolon there. If that works, can I just put the file buffer? Like, will that show it to me? Will it just dis display it on screen? Let me build this one more time. Oh, this doesn't have printf. Uh, I think I need to import another library that I might have missed. That should be standard lib, right? Standard IO? Yeah, standard IO.h. Now let's run that. Okay, succeeded. Let me try to run this one more time. Create file errored. Fine, because that's not a real file. Can I actually echo anything into that please sub file? And let's try and run it again. Okay, no errors, seemingly all good. It just has that piece of memory that I tried to output for our buffer. <laughs> now, if we can theoretically read in shell code, we should start to encrypt that, right? And we will need a key, but we could generate a random key and then probably try and brute force it to use in some cryptography later on. So this is super easy, right? Let's get back to our Maldiv Academy code search and let's look for generate a random key. Yeah, random key generation via Win APIs. I like that. All right, looking at the results here, we have random key generation, random key generation, and then random key generation via win APIs. What is the difference between this one and the other? Generate random key two, and this is generate random key three. Okay, I'm fine with that. Let's Let's use three, I guess. Let me go ahead and copy that code. We'll just paste that right into our syntax here. And now that I'm actually down here, I think reviewing this, this can just be a zero, zero in hex. It is a D word, right? It doesn't need to be null. I don't know, maybe null would have worked fine, but that makes me feel better looking at the code. <laughs> so now we've got the capability to generate random data, but we'll use that to define some keys that can be used for cryptography to encrypt our shellcode payload. Let me define a P byte for our P A E S key, and that can be our generate random key three and however many bytes that we want to supply in there. Yeah, the key size is the argument that gets pulled in. We can use 32, and then we'll do the very same thing for an initialization vector for AES. So I think that should be 16, right? Alongside that, we'll have a ulong pointer that'll be the output for our cipher text, correct? And we'll set that to null to start, and then the size of our cipher text, that can start as null just as well since it's another out parameter. Now we have some of the starting groundwork to actually use AES to encrypt 
our shell code and payload. But we need the implementation and we can get that super duper easy from Maldiv Academy code search. Again, if it's not clear, this is super duper awesome because I can literally just search across all the content and material presented in the Maldiv Academy curriculum. Like, let's say, using AES encryption from the CTAES library. Again, we can just copy all of this code and put it in action here. Let me get back to the top of our file. We can see we're building out some of the functionality here, but we have a couple missing values and variables. And that's because this is an example that actually includes some other header files and external code that we should pull in. So we can go download this. Same thing with the header file, we'll pull these down and I will just bring them into our project. Nothing fancy here, I'm literally just creating new items for exactly these files. Paste in the C code and we can do the very, very same for our ctas.header file that we'll grab, slap that all in and now the C file should be fine as it is and the main source code should be fine as it is. All right, we're looking good. Now we can scroll back to our main function and actually make use of these functions here. We'll make use of this with our conditionals, making sure that things succeed with a not prefix to call our function install AES encryption via CTAES. Now we'll use our file contents that we've read in as our encrypting data. We know the file size should be present just as well. And then our AES key, which we've created just above, our initialization vector or value, whatever the V stands for there. And then our output U ciphertext. And finally, our other output, which is just our ciphertext size here. If that errors, then we could simply say AES startup failed. We'll do a return negative one there. And we should probably also put an error for this just as well. Failed to read payload from disk. Now we're looking good. That is set up. But remember, we're trying to create our payload builder in this case. We'll still need to put together our loader, but that means that we should probably know how to use this shell code that we've just encrypted, in which case we should know how to decrypt it. But we just chose a random key, so we should try to brute force that random key. With that in mind, let me search for decryption key brute force. Yeah, there it is. Here is some syntax that we could use. We'll just go ahead and copy this thing. Here they use this as an example. It looks like it is even a full-blown binary .exe, so they must have a main function here, which they do, but we can clean that up and just kind of use the functions that we need. Let me go back to the top of our file, slap all this in, and we can remove that into main function that it just created here. We also probably don't need the print help function. I think we're good. We should just try now to determine that key. Well, actually, to be honest, I mean, if we're just encrypting it, well, I guess we need to know a little bit of both, but the encrypt submitted function in here, yeah, they offer an encrypt submitted key function, and that will be very, very useful because we'll be able to use that to stage the key hint and everything that we might be able to display out on our screen. So let me just define a byte here for our key hint that can be our encrypt submitted key given our AES key with the size that we could specify. That's 32 that we used just previously. We'll do the very, very same for our IV hint. And we'll just change in the variables that we passed there given the size and the correct variable. Oh, no, sorry, that should be AESIV. I'm dumb. Still, I didn't have to do much of anything other than just stage a lot of the variables here. Now, I would like to be able to see that. I'd like it to be printed out onto the screen. Can I search for hexadecimal array print? Yeah, okay, print a hexadecimal array, write specified memory into standard out. And that will be useful for printing shell code. Yeah, so let me go ahead and snag that, super easy. You know the drill, we'll just add that into our code, and now we could go ahead and display this. Let's print our hex array, given our AES key, display that buffer out, again, given the size, we can do the very, very same for our AES IV value. That should be just changing those here one more time. And then we can add just a couple new lines here, so that's a little bit cleaner to display. And now let's go ahead and print out our encrypted shell code, which should be pretty easy at this point because it's just our ciphertext that came from our AES function call. That should also include our U ciphertext and our size of our ciphertext. Looking good. But the benefit, now that we've pulled in that decrypt key brute force functionality, we can just simply print the decryption func for the AES key and the hint that we had created for it and our IV hint, correct? And honestly, at that point, 
we're done. We've just encrypted shell code that we were able to read off of disk, and goodness, we didn't really have to write any code, we just put it together from everything that Maldiv Academy already offered, already taught us in the course. So now we need to get some shell code, because I could run this on a stupid fake please subscribe, but uh, we need actual shell code. So I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine here, and I'm gonna fire up a terminal where I will just move into the root user, and uh, in my directory I do have the sliver server available to me. So let me see if I can fire that up. And now I am just going to cruise through the sliver documentation to generate a new stager that I could use as a payload. I think I can just use the MTLS option here to create some Windows shell code, looking good. Validate that with the profiles command. Okay, that is present. Now I can put together the listener with that. Should go ahead and create that. Fingers crossed this Kali VM has everything it needs. This is a fresh 2024.1. <laughs> okay, looking good. Yeah, it's got tender cadet going. Sweet. Do I have that job stage? I do. So now I can put together the actual stage or shell code that should build it all out with the profiles and everything that we have set up and working here. Yeah, okay. Now we have a broken armament. And if I open up a, another terminal, if I actually go take a look at that thing, that does exist. Obviously, if I cat it out, it is just all shell code. And oh, it's owned by root, of course. Let me pseudo chone Cali Cali to that fella. Now can I cat that out? Disgusting broken shell code. I love it. All right, so let's go put that into our Windows development machine. I'll copy this file out. Back over on Windows, let's make a directory for the malware that we're working with here. And let me open up the file explorer and try to paste in that shell code. We right click to paste and there we go. We have our broken armament. And let me see now, can I run my sandbox on my broken armament? And um, oh, we need to compile the code. <laughs> Let's get back here. Control B in Visual Studio. Hopefully there are no errors. Fingers crossed. All right. Once succeeded, we're looking good. Now let's try that one more time. And there is everything that we need for our payload builder. Look at that. Took all the shell code, encrypted it as necessary. And now we could use that in a loader or a little bit more of our tradecraft. Here's the thing. I barely wrote any code. I was just able to copy and paste, grab the snippet that were available already set for me from Maldiv Academy and all of their curriculum, the courses, the material, everything that they've taught, and I could just easily rip through that with code search. And I think that's pretty slick. It's everything that like I've always wanted for my own code base of things to be able to pull, grab bag assortment of what I'll need for development tools, software that I'm writing. With that, I hope you take a look at Maldiv Academy code search. There is a link in the video description and hey, big shout out, big thanks. Maldiv Academy did sponsor this video and I'm grateful for all their support. And they were nice enough to offer a discount code, Damn Ken. but you know what? Let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we could put together the loader and then complete this attack chain with the shell code that we just generated and get a sliver callback. I'm going to insert this section as a sped up time lapse, but the snippets of code that I'll be using from code search are AES decryption using the CTAES library, process creation with block DLL policy, remote mapping injection via Hell's Hall, and delaying execution with no APIs. Alrighty, John from the future here. Sorry I had to step away for a little bit, but I have gotten this working. The loader is working just just fine for the shell code that we were able to decrypt just previously. So I have Sliver running in the Kali Linux VM on the left hand side. I'm still in the Windows target and development machine on the right hand side. So let me go ahead and build this. We can see that will compile just fine. And we have the loader.exe all set and ready for us. If I open up a command line, just to trigger or fire that off, we could put it on the desktop, whatever. We could go ahead and run this and now see our session come through. Now we have a new handler up and running because I was getting the stage already. But if I view my sessions, I should be able to see we have this individual. Now, if I wanted to interact with it, I can use sessions tag I. So I'll go ahead and use that for that rendition here. And with that, I could do anything that I wanted to. I could go ahead and check, hey, who am I? I could interact with it, get a shell, pop open and navigate around anything. <laughs> yeah, I know it's bad obsec. I am an adult, I hope. There we go. Look at that. I'm in C Windows System 32 in this case, but I could just drop into the users directory and you'll see that, look, I do have John being the target here and I could do anything we'd like. 
Moving into John's desktop, we can see everything that I've been working on here and even some of the future upcoming videos. So there you have it. Super duper easy copy and paste coding. Thanks to Maldive Academy Code Search, we could just rapidly put together a payload builder and loader. I for one think it is really, really cool. I hope you do too. And if you haven't, please do give Maldive Academy and now Maldive Academy Code Search a try. There's a link in the video description and thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things like comment subscribe and I will see you in the next one.